that we have always this aspect of doing or being is that if you are in God then you are being developed by him to become godly and to become more like him day by day because Jesus in you is the hope of glory because he's the author of your faith but he's the finisher of it too and he is at work both to do and to will of his good pleasure in you accomplishing his word to go out from you to affect those around you as he works through you in those things that you are doing as you commit them unto him and as you trust in him and as you allow him to be the Lord our God living and alive in you and he accomplishes this in the miraculous way of being possessing your flesh literally by his Holy Spirit inside of you abiding as a directive force but as a person who always can speak to you in a still small voice boy wasn't that salvation in a nutshell <laughs> so because God is in process of changing you and arranging you and conforming you and doing all these things what he does is he takes the image of the potter and the clay and he says look I put the clay on the spindle to form it and the spindle spins and as it spins God just keeps moving it and shaping it into what he wants it to be but the clay is still it may be spinning around in a circle but the clay is still sitting on the spindle so if God tells you to be still at some point in time to know he is God is because he's working and he wants you to stop working to stop doing to stop being he wants you to let him so you will let go and let God develop you because sometimes you know he doesn't want to tell you this but your best efforts really suck you know your best intentions really are miserable and the best that you could do is to not do anything at all because sometimes God wants you to just stand still be still wait rest and then only go forward when he tells you to now it's going to sound a little weird but believe it or not he made six days for working but he made one day to not do anything and we call it rest because we didn't mean it to become like a, a sabbath holy day where you kind of go to church and you do your thing or you if you're jewish you become you know we're going to go to temple because we're going to daven you know and do all these genuflections and redirections and cause ourselves to be focused on holiness and make it something that it's not and never was meant to be but God wanted the sixth day the seventh day you know six days you're traveling you know in the desert you know you need to take a seventh day to rest because if you read what God said when he said to the children of Israel you know on the seventh day you know rest he didn't even want them to come out of their tents so get real it was meant just to rest it wasn't really meant to you know go out and do the yard work or you know do the honeydew list or do this do that do the other thing God wanted people to stop being religious stop being busy stop being Seventh-day Adventists or sabbatical law keepers or legalists or whatever but he wanted you to just stop long enough be quiet long enough get away from your family long enough to hear him speak do you know what the word be still means rest be still and know that I'm God sometimes you need to take one day out of the week of seven days to rest because God's plan for eternity isn't changed because of grace it isn't rearranged because we have no longer under the law or no longer affected by the consequence of the law but that God created you to have the ability for six days to do what you want to do or you know be what you want to be because God really wants every day to be the same but the point being is that on one day out of seven you ought to rest because you need to recharge your batteries and I don't mean by going and doing something I mean by being still and let the Lord change you arrange you speak to you and know you because I'll give you an example 
If you're not hearing God's voice today, it's probably because you haven't taken the time to rest one day out of seven. And I don't mean the Saturday for a Sabbath, or the Sunday for a Sabbath, or a Monday for a Sabbath, or a Tuesday, or Wednesday, or Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Whichever day you choose, it doesn't matter. But if you're going seven days, one day, you need to rest in Him. Rest in the Lord is what it was meant to be. So you can take that to the bank, and you can cash it in, and draw it on my account, because God has filled that one full of the scriptures that prove what He meant by what six days would labor and the seventh day rest. Not some legal, eagle kind of let's tie it, bind it, confine it, define it, refine it so that it becomes even more work on a day of rest than a day of rest could ever work out to be. In God calling, no tired work. Rest. It is wrong to force work. Rest until life, eternal life, flowing through your veins and hearts and minds, bids you to bestir yourself, and then work, glad work will follow. Tired work never tells. Rest. Remember, I am your physician, healer of mind and body. Look to me for cure, for rest, for peace. I can tell you this. If you are laboring seven days, you're going against the will of God. Really, you are. It just flat out is true. And I don't care if you're keeping the Sabbath, because if you're keeping the Sabbath and you're not resting, you're breaking the Sabbath. That's the way it is. Bottom line. The reality is, is that you can rest in Him and then wait for Him, and then He will choose for you on your day of rest what to do or what not to do. But the point is, be alone with God in some way, sometime, one day out of seven, so that you're getting kind of like a restfulness. But mostly because, guess what? One day, you're going to walk with God, and it would be kind of a bummer if He's a stranger to you. So today, if He's causing you to rest, treat today as that seventh day, whatever day it is, and then take the moment to rest in Him, rest in the Lord. Be assured that if you stand still, it's okay. God can do what He wants to do then. It's okay to not be connected with the internet, to not be connected with the television, to not be connected with every other thing except the Lord your God in the midst of you. And He may cause you to lay down in green pastures and to just have a picnic with God alone with Him. Take the moment. Don't make it into something it never was, never should be, and never will be again. But rest when he tells you to, because God knows what's best.